Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a factorial analysis of variance in R Studio. So it all starts with your data file. So I would recommend using a data editor like Excel to create a comma delimited CSV file. And the way you want to organize this is you have a column for your subject identification number. So each different number represents a different subject. So you can see that we have many different subjects here. Then you're going to have a column for your first IV. And so we're just going to call this test. And by the way, I use all caps here. It's just simpler in R when typing commands to have uh, variable names with all capital letters because it is case sensitive. So something to watch out for. So I just use all caps for everything. So uh, we have one variable that we're calling test. There's two levels of it, first and second. So you can use whatever strings you want to designate your different levels of your IV here. And then we have another variable called stem. It has three levels, match, OS, and unprimed. So you're going to have those sort of repeating to organize your group. So we have a two by three factorial design here. Then we have our dependent variable that we're calling prop. And you have your dependent variable sort of listed uh, out there. So you enter your data into Excel in this way. Then you go to save it as, and you're going to save it as a comma delimited CSV file. So be very careful here. Select the CSV comma delimited plain CSV text. Uh, there's a couple different options in Excel, but that will create problems when you import your data set into R Studio. So you want to select this version to make sure that you don't have any problems. So we're going to now import our data into R Studio. So you can go over here to import data set, or you can go to the file navigation import data set from text base. So that's what we're going to do. You navigate to your file. And I'm going to select the factorial CSV file. That's the one I want to import. So I'm going to click open. Now you're going to get this pop-up window. And up here, it's going to ask you for a data frame name. So just type in a short name because you're going to be using this in your commands. You also want to name it something that you can keep track of, particularly if you have a lot of analyses. Over here on the right, you're going to see a preview of what your file looks like that it's reading and make sure that that's right. You have a couple different switches here. I cover, that, I cover all of them in a different video. Key one here, strings as factors, you want that checked to make your data frame uh, work a little bit better for you. And then down here, that's your data frame. And so we're going to click import, and now the data will be imported, as you can see, as our name data1 up there. And now we're ready to uh, begin the analysis of variance. But before we do that, we need to load a package. And this package is called AFX. As you can see, it's already installed on my computer. If it's not installed on your computer, you're going to have to go to install our packages and install the AFX package. Even if you've installed it, if you're using RStudio, you've got to check it to activate it. And as you see, when I check it, it does this library AFX command. You could type that into your command console as well, or check it, and it will load in the AFX package. Now we're ready to use the various commands that are in the AFX package that make the analysis easy. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it AOV1 just for analysis of variance 1. We're going to set it equal to the output of this AOV easy command. This is the command that's in the AFX package. First thing it wants to know is what's your sub identification number variable. And so we call it sub ID. It's going to ask for your dependent variable. We're going to analyze this prop variable. It's going to ask for your data frame. So our data frame name is data1, so it should match what's up, what's up here. And then now you're going to tell it what the design is. So we have a between, we have, actually have two between subjects variables. If you had more, it would work the same way. You're just, your list would be a little bit longer. And so you just have C parentheses, and then you're going to type the name of your first uh, IV. So in our case, it's test, and then you have a comma, and then you're going to have the second IV stem and you can see that it sort of populates it for you and so that's our design that's it so if you had a third variable you would just put it in that list it's, a, it's as simple as that so you press enter and it will run and it won't show you anything but if you look up here you'll see the outcome of your analysis of variance stored in this variable aov1 that we created so there's two ways to see this outcome so you can type aov1 and it will show the outcome of your analysis of variance each IV is listed over here with the degrees of freedom. So like 192, you have your mean square error, you have your F value, you have your generalized eta squared effect size, and you have your P value here. And of course down here it looks a little weird, but this is the interaction between the two variables, test by stimulus interaction there. 
Now another way to see the output is to use this nice command. So we just type nice AOV1 is our object that's uh, stored all this data, the outcome of the analysis of variance. We have a couple different switches. So we're going to use e effect size. We're going to switch that to partial eta squared uh, measure of effect size. And then I'm going to apply a correction. And in this case, it's a geyser greenhouse correction for violations of sphericity. And then I don't need the mean square error, so I'm just going to set that to false. That'll just clean up our analysis a little bit better, make it look a little bit better. If you have a lot going on, sometimes it's better to sort of suppress that. But if you want it, just leave this command out. And when we do this, you'll see that you sort of have your geyser greenhouse correction applied, didn't apply anything, um, but you have your F values, your degrees of freedom, et cetera. The output looks basically the same in this particular case. So that's all there is to it. If you like this video, press like. Uh, if you like videos of this kind, you can subscribe, but thanks for watching.